Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdale here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on matrices. And in particular, we're going to link linear systems and their solution methods with matrices. Now, in previous presentations, we talked about row operations and row echelon forms of matrices. And in this video, we're going to apply those ideas. So we're going to look at linear systems and do some matrix uh, row operations and see what um, uh, what we can conclude about the solvability of our system. Okay, so what do we mean by solvability? Let me share my screen with you. Okay, so a linear system it might be something like this, uh, 2x1 plus 3x2 equals negative 1 and x1 minus 2x2 equals 4, something like that. That's a linear system. Linear systems have one of the following situations. A linear system either has no solution or one and only one solution, which we call a unique solution, or that can, there can be an infinite number of solutions. Now, in the first two cases where there is a solution or at least one solution, we call the system consistent okay so if there's one or infinitely many solutions we talk about the solution being consistent right now if the solution is consistent then we can use an idea called back substitution to find the solution set now if a solution if a linear system has no solutions then we call it inconsistent okay and what we're going to do is First of all, from a, a row echelon form matrix, we can determine which one of these situations occur. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. This is one I've prepared earlier, and I'm just gonna step you through it, and then we'll do one by, by hand in a minute, okay? All right, so. Let's discuss the case where all the left-hand columns are leading. So when I talk about left-hand columns, I'm just talking about all the columns that are on the left-hand side of this line, okay? And when, when we talk about leading, we of course, I, I talked about this in other videos, what you do is you, you look at each column and you see, does this column have the first or the most left-hand entry of some row, okay? So this one does, this one does, this one does, okay? so that's the first entry of row one, that's in column one, that's the first entry of row two, that's in column two, that's the first entry of row three, which is in column three. So all the left-hand columns in this matrix, this uh, uh, augmented matrix, are leading, okay? So let's say we come up with this form after we've done some row reductions, and we've talked about how to, how to come up with a row reduction form, okay? So, what you can see here, firstly, is this is the most basic uh, row. Each row represents an equation, yeah? So this bottom row represents negative three x three equals negative three, okay? So from row three, all right? So this is row three in this case. So from that equation, we can just read off the solution, all right? X three would be, equal to one just by division all right happy about that you can see how a row echelon form gives us a very simple um, uh, situation here okay so now we can use back substitution what does the second row say the second row says negative one x2 minus five x3 equals negative seven now we know what x3 is so i can put that into here and rearrange to get x2 Okay, so so this row says negative x negative one x two minus five x three equals negative seven, and replace x three with that, and then rearrange, and you get x two equals two. Oops, sorry, let me move that up a bit. Okay, so that's row two. So start at the bottom, move back one row, and you get that for x two. Okay, we know x3 and x2, now we can use row 1 to get x1. 
brilliant. Okay, the, the row one says 1x1 one one plus 2x2 two plus 3x3 three three equals 8. You know that, you know that. You can again use this. Sub in x2 and x3, and then you get x1 equals 1. Okay, so there are your, there's your solution. So in this case, all the left-hand columns are leading, and we got a unique solution, one and only one uh, solution for x1, x2, and x3. Okay, brilliant. It's not always as simple as that, though. Sometimes not all the columns on the left-hand side are leading, okay? So what do you do in that case? Well, that'll be a case where um, uh, you have an infinite number of solutions. So some of them, okay? So let me, let, let's discuss that. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, so what happens in this case is that the variables corresponding to the non-leading columns are called non-leading variables. And what we do is we still use back substitution, but we also assign some variables or parameters. Okay, so let me give you an example and we can we, we can see what, what's going on here. All right, so here's an example. Okay, so solve the following linear system for x1, x2, x3, and x4. So you've got three equations, you've got five unknowns. So let's write this as a um, augmented matrix and then see if we can uh, uh, follow some of this these steps up here. Okay, so we write the coefficients as um, entries in our matrix. And in the right hand side is written as a column over here. And there you have it. Okay, now, if we look at this matrix, it is in row echelon form. Okay, now, let's look uh, all, uh, let's look for the columns here. So here is a leading column because it contains the first entry of that row. This column though is not leading. It doesn't contain the, the most left hand entry of any row. Same with this one. Okay, so these two columns are non-leading columns. That column's leading, that column's leading, that co uh, Oh, hang on, sorry, I put it in the wrong place. Sorry, good thing I checked that. That column's not leading, sorry about that. That is a leading column because it contains that in row three. I've put, the, put it in the wrong place. Okay, so these are non-leading columns okay so column two and column five not not this column sorry about that okay all right so which unknowns does column two associate with it can it associates with the x2 and which unknown does column five associate with well x5 okay so we would say in using this language up here the non-leading variables in this uh, situation are uh, x2 and x5. So let's write that down. All right. Okay. So now let's 
follow the uh, uh, advice up here, assign to each nonlinear variable some sort of parameter. Okay, all right, so let, uh, let's say x2 be lambda 1 and say let uh, x5 equal lambda 2. All right. All right. So what can we read off immediately from our, our matrix? Well, we, we know it from up here. We've got 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 plus 1x4 plus 0x5 equals 1. So x4 equals 1. All right. So we go to the bottom row and we, 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 we find out something. All right. Now what we're going to do is use this information to go up a row and, and um, we substitute these things in here and we'll get uh, x3 in terms of x1 and x, uh, uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Okay, all right, so let's do that. So row 2 gives, so what do we have here? So I'll just write it around the other way. We've got 2x3 plus 1x4 plus 3x5 equals 3. Let me write that around the other way because we're going to make a substitution here. Okay, so we can now replace x4 with 1 x5 with lambda 2, and I can rearrange to make x3 the subject, okay? So I rearrange, I make x3 the subject and get x3 in terms of lambda 2. If I do that, I'll get the following. Okay, so that will come to the other side, that will come to the other side, and you divide by 2. Okay, so now I have x3 in terms of lambda 2. Let's keep on going. We, we've done that row, we've done that row, now it's time to do this row. So this row says x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 plus x4 plus 2x5 equals 1. Now, I know I, know I have an expression for x2, x5, x4 and x3. So I plug them in there and I make um, x1 the subject. All right, so again, let me write it like this. Okay, then we replace each of these things with things that we've come up with earlier. All right, so um, I don't know what x1 is. That's what I'm trying to find. x2 is lambda 1. x3 is given here. Um, x4 is 1, and x5 is lambda 2. So if I uh, rearrange this, simplify it, rearrange it, I will get the following. Okay. All right, let's see where we're at. We've got x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. Okay, can you see what, what was happening there? We identified the non-leading rows, uh, sorry, the non-leading columns, right? Assigned, uh, the talked about the non-leading variables for each one and then assigned a parameter for each non-leading variable. Then we went to the bottom row and got some information and then worked our way back up the rows through back substitution. Okay, now if I wanted to write this solution out, um, say in a vector form, I could do it in the following way. So I'll have, uh, so if I write this out like this, so x1, x5, okay, so um, it'll be something like this. 
Okay, just writing these as vectors now. So I take out the uh, the constant vector, factor out the lambda ones, and the lambda twos. Okay, so you might just want to check that. Right? I've written that down rather rather quickly. Okay, so there's a couple of processes for using a row echelon form to solve a system. But what happens when there's no solution? How, how, how do you know? Well, we talked about that, and I've said, oh, well, it's the inconsistent case. Well, let, let me just talk about that a little bit more. Right, suppose you've got your augmented matrix and you reduce it to a row echelon form. If there is a row where you have zeros in that row on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side of the line you have a non-zero number, then the system has no solution. What, why is that? Well, this is kind of saying like something like 0x1 plus 0x2 plus blah, 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 blah equals something that's non-zero. Obviously, that can't make sense. So, in other words, if the right-hand column of the row echelon matrix is leading, then the system has no solution. The system is inconsistent. So, let me show you a real basic example. So, let's say you were doing your system and you had it like this. Okay, so that's a row echelon form. The first row says um, 1x1 plus 2x2 equals 3. The second row says 0x1 plus 0x2 equals 4. So we will conclude that the, the, the system associated with this is inconsistent. Okay. Okay, so we didn't actually do any row operations in that in that um, example, but um, uh, but the row operations will be needed to get to that row echelon form. Anyway, what do you think? I'm exhausted. If you have any questions, any comments, put them in the comment section. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.